Test, test. There we go. Get my headphones on. Everybody hearing everything all right? be working on stuff right now and then uh, as we're as people are coming in and they see something or whatever first of ask questions let me know where you're at on the production process and I'll repost this link as well rename it to version 2.5 What I'm doing right now is just playing around with the uh, there's there's dry and a wet mix on the kick, and I'm just playing around with different options. Um, something that I'm doing right here, I turned off. I decided not to do any of the reverb, so uh, all that stuff. You can go ahead and keep the mono there because it's a kick drum, and kick should be monoed unless there's a really specific reason why you're not doing it. So I'll go ahead and copy it over here as well, just to be safe in case I do something. Not all effects have a, a stereo element, so it's it's not always necessary. So this drum bus, not necessary. But if I were to throw a reverb on it, you've got different things happening on different channels. And a lot of delays have a left and right channel that you can affect differently, so... Um, actually, uh, synthesizers, if you have a stereo out on a synth, the only reason that that stereo out exists, um, instead of a mono out is because it has stereo effects. So yeah, there's a little tidbit of knowledge and I'm just playing around with just different, uh, different balances of what I want for dry, wet, and the kick. And there, I've explained earlier in previous sessions why I have this set up this way. 
Um, and there's different ways you can do it. Some people do just a uh, straight uh, uh, duplicate channel here. So you would take uh, right here and then duplicate it and then you could get the same effect. But I like to just keep it streamlined with everything and I'll create groups within the audio effect rack. I'll have a clean signal. So we'll, we'll name this clean. Uh, yeah. Or better, we'll name it dry. And then this one, we'll name it wet. So the reason I do this is anytime you start putting effects on kicks, uh, it does start to degrade the initial transient, which is a lot of times the most important element of a kick. And what I can do is show you what I mean by a transient. If we go in here, go into the sampler. Let's go, boop, boop. Why can't I see? What am I doing wrong? Totally should be able to see this. Chain, hide, nope. What am I, how am I messing with this? I'm doing this the wrong way. So, do I just have, oh, I'm passing, that's, <laughs> That's why I was routing the I was routing a kick out from a sampler and I was like why can't I see why can't I see the sampler but yeah so we've got the sampler here um and this is a this is on multi sample mode so if I just show you this right here let's take the rim shot for example that initial hit that initial spike is a transient right these little peaks, transients. And if you start to uh, degrading those, then you end up, um, you end up taking a big part of a lot of the sounds, like a clap, a clap, if you take off the transient, then the clap quickly stops sounding like a clap in the traditional sense. And that can create cool effects, but for kick drums, if you're wanting it to kind of drive a, drive a track, you wanna make sure you have the transient. So that's why, all that's to say, that's why going down here, you create a, a wet signal for all the, any kind of processing you wanna experiment with, and then you can always, you can really mangle that on uh on the wet signal and then with the dry signal you can start inching it up as as the wet signal starts to degrade so you always have that dry signal kind of guiding the mix it's just my two cents does anybody have any questions on what they've uh, come across or or what they've been doing if they've been producing stuff through this uh tutorial or anything like that like I say, I'll do it as long as as there's an interest level um, and as long as time allows me to. So, let's see. There we go. Should have copy the Dropbox link. I'll post this in the chat. And that should pull up uh with the newest with the newest version yep uh actually i need to i'll i'll do the project file sorry about that So if there's no questions, I was really hoping to do to do kind of a Q&A type thing. But if there's no questions, then I will I'll just start working chiseling away at this track.
gonna roll off uh, the low end on the the wet signal. Just bring this down. So I bring up the frequency with that's being emphasized here. And this is the drum bus uh, plugin. That's a factory plugin on Ableton Live. questions any questions that come up as we go along just let me know Something I want to, something I really have been getting into. Um, funny enough, before uh, before the pandemic hit, I was really just creating most of my sounds. I would I would have like your one hit samples, which are like your your drums, your rim shots, and all that. I still use one hit samples pretty religiously. And then I would create any kind of melody or whatnot, generally speaking, with synthesizers or VSTs or whatever. And I never really got into the world of sampling um, and never used a lot of loops, never used uh, anything like that. And I've really discovered a beauty in the last year of not just sampling, but resampling and resampling again and resampling again and resampling again. And so, for example, like you've got this that started out with, uh, I believe this was the original. And if we go to if we look up the the actual let's see oh i just moved my um my sound library give me just a second getting all organized here so uh one thing that one thing that this would be if you played let's play this all the way out Turn off the delay and let it play. Pretty stock, uh, not the most interesting sound or, or maybe something that's been used over and over again. But then I put the grain delay on it and then resampled this right here. So now we've got this. Now let's play around with this again. And you can get really interesting in the, uh, 
the clip window, which I've already done with, uh, with the gain automation and the transposition. But let's get, just go, just do. Okay. So here I'm hearing, uh, here I'm hearing a hi-hat, a pretty interesting hi-hat. So let's take this all the way down. And now we've got and bring up the volume on this. And let's bring this down. Let's bring this down one row because we'll keep this uh we'll keep the voice going. Let's make a new audio track right below it. And then And we'll put, we'll do a little bit of processing on that. Actually, I like the processing that was going on here. So we can do the delay. Let's put it all on there. And bring down the, play around with the milliseconds a little bit. And let's make the noise a little bit wider. So I'm going to turn off this LFO. If you remember that I was doing that. Let's go here with the width. Oh, we'll turn that on, turn that off. And I'm going to roll off because there's a little bit of uh, low end that's right now not problematic because I don't have any, it's not a real busy track, but eventually, so you can see that like low energy that we don't really need. So just create a, a high pass filter on EQ8 and what you do by, you just click here and then you have all the different options. It's the one that is basically um, a... Let's say a candy cane pa passing, uh, facing to the right, pointing to the right with the long part. And though that's what you would call a high pass filter, the opposite direction is a low pass filter. Why it's called a high pass filter is that it allows everything above that point to pass through and anything below it to cut off. So, yeah, this rolls off all the low end. Now we're good. Put a little feedback on this uh, delay. And let's unlink these two. Just to give it a little bit of a stereo feel. And what's gonna, what we're gonna notice here is this is gonna get kind of annoying. So we need to give a little bit of, a little bit of movement for this. So we've already got uh, the LFO with the uh, given, given some bringing noise in and out. But I'd also like to do it. Let's just put an EQ8 on here. Put a low pass on it. And let's put a let's bring another LFO down here in the mix. Map it to the frequency here. We don't need it to be that frequent. And we're gonna offset. And we'll bring the depth. 
just down. The depth is telling us how much we're using the LFO on this, right? Okay, just to give it a little bit of movement. And I'm already annoyed with this uh, hi-hat sound that I thought was genius, which is pretty normal. Don't be afraid to always reevaluate things that you think sound awesome. Sometimes it's like the emperor's new clothes. You know, you, you, you hear something new and it's, it sounds, you think it sounds dope because it's new. It's not always the case. Okay, we've got to figure out. So I also, one thing I was doing is I was reinstalling everything. I started from scratch and I, uh, everything I didn't install or like migrate anything over here or anything. So everything is new and that includes preferences that I've had and preferences that I've not had to go into, um, for almost a decade because I've always migrated my preferences over. So I just wanted to start completely clean from scratch. Um, I would guess that it is a look and feel. Let's see. Follow behavior scroll. Um, that's going to. Uh, okay. That's not going to be what I'm looking for. There's a. So there's a setting here where you can actually set and you can determine if you want the cursor, for example, here, the cursor keeps following and there's a way you can have it be locked on to where you're zoomed into, um, where, yeah. So familiarize yourself with the settings. I'm not going to bore you online with them. Um, but you've got different settings like audio. This is where you would set up your audio interface. And I should have gone through this earlier on for people that don't know. So if you get a new audio interface, then you go into audio and you've got all these different settings. You can set it to your computer speakers or to your headphones or whatever. So that's something to be aware of. If you ever get a MIDI controller, you're going to come into here and it's going to probably know your control surface because there's quite a few and it's already set up and ready to go, which is really nice. And then you do the input and output and all that stuff. So you can set up as many MIDI controllers um, as you want and have full control of all those things. Um, library, that's relevant for, um, it was a lot more relevant back in the day when you would have, uh, things wouldn't always be installed in the place. You would have to drag and drop a lot of folders. So it, it, nowadays you don't, if you're, if you're starting a new, you're lucky. You don't have to do much there. Plugins, kind of the same thing. For years, you used to have to, you used to have to download the plugin and there would be component, audio unit, and VST, and uh, Artas or, uh, uh, yeah, Artas is the Pro Tools version of the plugin. And you used to have to drag and drop into folders and you would always like have all these different folders. And now with the clean install, everything's so clean, so nice. But if you needed to, for some reason, find a custom folder that you had migrated from another computer, then you can browse and you can set up whatever folder you need to. So, but the cleaner, the better. One thing, one thing that I didn't know until I was dealing with a crashing issue many, many versions ago, when I was talking with Ableton support, um, they can read the crash reports and let you know what, what's going wrong. And I never knew this. Um, but as a good rule of thumb, it creates a lot more stable of a session if you have either exclusively audio units or exclusively VSTs. Okay. Um, 
And another thing, I was I was on the phone with a plug-in manufacturer not too long ago, and VST threes a lot of just kind of get in the habit if you have if you have third party plugins get in the habit of using VST threes. Reason being is there will come a day where a lot of these plugin manufacturers will stop supporting their VST one. It's not the end of the world in that, for example, if they if they stop supporting a VST one, then you could save the preset and then bring it over to a VST three and it would recognize that. Problem being is a lot of it, it's not going to be a clean migration. So you might be pulling up old sessions and on a new computer, you might need to jump back and forth between the old computer because you've got a VST one and now you're going over to VST three. Uh, VST three. What? What's a VST three? the The biggest the biggest difference with a VST three is that I was showing you in a couple tutorials before things like sidechain compression. Sidechain compression requires an audio input from another source, and you used to not be able to do that except with um, native Ableton plugins. Now, with the advent of VST3, and Ableton didn't always support VST3 right out of the gate. Now they do, and now you can uh, route external audio into um, any VST for things like sidechaining, things like a dynamic EQ that you want to sidechain, and all that good stuff. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions? I'm kind of just going through... Um, what we've covered, thinking about things that I've left out, and really just working on a track. People are free to watch. I'm posting the track, the updated version of the track, so that you can go through and um, check it out yourself, all that stuff. So are there any questions? Also, give me feedback on what, uh, if you could, on what time the the streams are ideal for for these type of things i know that things are pretty much and this is great this is a great problem to have things are starting to reopen life is coming back slowly in different parts of the world um in berlin it's uh getting much much um more open uh had lunch outside, all this stuff today, and um, feels good. It's great, but uh, that means that not everybody's always at home, and so now you need to start thinking about scheduling. So uh, just let me know what time works. And the nice thing about doing it on YouTube is that these will these will always be here. So for better or for worse. Ask me in five years if, if I look at back at these and say, oh my gosh, what was I doing? too drastic with the way it's it's hitting there we go and I'm gonna warp this a little bit around also with warping audio that that's like uh moving stuff slightly off the grid is 
super important to to get because it's machine music you've got to humanize it you know it used to be like you would try to mechanize humans and make them more on time as a drummer and all this now you've got to make these fully quantized machines behave a little bit more like humans so I'm gonna automate this, uh, I'm gonna plug in the LFO to this. bring down the decay or sustain and release a little bit. Any questions about anything? also always pay attention to like with which direction the groove is going so just you know play around with muting different tracks and sometimes like right now this this clap is really catching me because the the delay chain that that it's being sent through is kind of guiding the rhythm there I'm going to bring up the delay a little bit. Or even better, what I could do is I could route, I could bring in, I, I really am liking that, uh, what the groove is that's being created from uh, delay, the delay rack that I've got on uh, return C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record, I'm going to record in there. So let's do this. So now, let's turn off the input on this. And I can start manipulating this audio. But what I'm gonna do Hear how it's coming. Always put my headphones on the wrong ear. Um, hear how the groove is coming out of the right ear. Well, that's uh, that's the way I had the the delay routed. So you could obviously always go back and make that that mono if you wanted to. But what I'm gonna do a little trick on this is we will first take um go into your audio effects go into utility 
and we'll go to we're going to pan it all the way to the right and then we're going to take this mono now and there's there's probably about half a dozen ways to do the exact same thing but yeah so if you if you're really liking the audio f of one of one channel um, but not the other pan it all the way to that channel and then go to mono it so then you get effectively a, a little bit of a stereo feel out of it and then if you want to reintroduce some width to it then um, you can do some mid side EQ let's go to the side we might need to uh, let's let's give it a little bit of width now or let's figure out a way we can give it some width let's do let's do some reverb on here let's get rid of that low end mud Okay. And now the groove, the groove's a little bit weird. So play around with where it's at. Now let's play around with the pitch. So now we've got a completely different track just from sampling, resampling, bending audio, warping audio, doing all that stuff. So what if we did this? What if we went even further down this? Let's copy this, duplicate this track. Now we can start warping this. Obviously, we're not going to keep it that way. Bend it even more. Take that down. And then we can we can move everything, manipulate it to get it to line up with what we need it to. And then you set warp markers. For, so once you get to a place where you want to keep it still, you just double click. And that way, anything you bend beyond that 
it doesn't touch because we want that initial hit right there. I want that to hit right on the kick. Okay? But then I want to line up this other rhythm a little bit different on the grid. And then something else you can do, something else you can play around with is that you can do, um, let's just, there's, there's a few different options. You, you right click on the audio clip and then you've got slice to new MIDI track, convert harmony to new MIDI track, convert melody to new MIDI track, convert drums to new MIDI track. So this is a little complicated because it's not it's not really generating the things that it's supposed to do. In theory, what it's supposed to do is if you say, right, okay, this audio clip is a melody and I want to have this be converted from audio to a MIDI notation and a synthesized pre, or pre or synth preset or sampler preset that sounds very similar to the sound palette that this audio file has it just isn't the technology's not there sometimes it sometimes it gets pretty close if it's a pretty basic loop and not being too demanding but other times not but what i have found is that if you do so like let's convert the drums to a midi track And what you can do there absolutely, absolutely misses the boat, right? Except, except it does pretty decent, pretty decent with what it, um, where things are hitting on the, on the MIDI notation. So what happens if you just, you know, let's just delete everything except the, that little notation. Um, and let's just delete the whole thing. Let's go in, let's pull in a uh, wavetable synth. So go up to instruments, let's go to wavetable, go up here. Don't fail me now, machine. Let's just go in. Let's just go into the preset folder. Let's say let's do synth keys or maybe uh piano and keys. Nothing there. Let's do synth keys. Let's try a chord, little chord synth. And it, it, the, the point of it is, is not to duplicate something. The point of it is, is to find different ways to create inspiration. You know, there are, there's so many different things you can do when you're completely stuck and you're just staring at a screen, you can do so many things that don't do what they're supposed to do, but can yield inspiration. I mean, the 909, the TR-909 was designed for a purpose that it completely failed at. Completely failed. The, the purpose of the TR-909 was to create a automatic drum rhythm machine 
that would allow bands to rehearse without a drummer present. Pretty useless for that time and for its use case. Like it just didn't work. Sat on the shelf on pawn shops and then an entire movement of music was created because of these things that don't do so well. I don't think, I don't think the, the whole like convert um, harmony to new MIDI track, convert melody to new MIDI track or convert drums even to new MIDI track works for its intended purpose. But it does do something with creating, with yielding inspiration, right? So now I've got a chord going on here. Um, and let's just crop this. Crop clip. And this is really crazy with this, um, with wavetable. So we need to open up wavetable and the reason being is you need to go in if wavetable ever makes your computer take a nosedive go into the polyphonic part and bring it down to as many voices as you as as few voices as you need and a voice is basically telling you how many times, how many different instances of a note you can play at the same time. So if you play, a th if you play three notes in a chord, if you've got a chord that's three notes, boom, you're only hearing two because I've turned down the, vo uh, the voices to two. So let's go to three. That's what it should sound like. But if you go to two, it's going to prioritize the first two notes that are hit and then it's going to kick out the other one or you can i mean there's different settings to do different things mono mono is going to do one note so i want to do poly let's do two and let's see what we can get out of here bring that down and so these are way off the grid as well so we'll bring them back Keep in mind that I was slicing it to drums, so the pitch isn't, it's not even like trying to guess where you were at on the MIDI, it's, it's hitting the MIDI note to correspond with the drum sampler, but I replaced it with a synth. So, so yeah, that's what we gotta figure out. We gotta figure out the tuning of it all to get it in, in the right tune with the track and all that. Something else to consider while we're talking about tuning Keep in mind that when you're going through presets, each preset might have different tuning, right? So, for example, this oscillator here is um, it's detuned a little bit. That's that's just for giving it a little bit of vibe. Um, but it, sometimes you'll have presets, depending on who made it or how they were made, that they've detuned it some semitones and if you do that, then what's going to happen is you might be, you might have played a melody and you're going through presets to find something that you like better. 
and you're going to get to a synth sound that you might like better, but just pay attention to the tuning of the synth because that might be why it's not lining up. duplicate this and So now it's starting to create some problems for my processor, which isn't normal. That it should actually be something that's resolved in a new update with Ableton. We'll see. But there's some pretty heavy processor spikes or CPU spikes. Um, so, so I'm just keeping it on there. Bring this down. down the velocity a little bit. See, I really need, I really need the third voice. I need the third voice, but my processor keeps spiking there. And so what we'll do is we will do something that you can do if things start spiking. Just freeze something. So I uh, forget you. It says it can't be frozen. See, these are the times where you're trying not to swear because it's, going to be on the internet forever but yeah so we can freeze this let's freeze operator and what freezing does is it basically renders out a audio segment of what you made actually i'm gonna cancel that and i'm gonna go here and i'm just gonna turn it off because i'm not even using this right now 
But when you freeze a track, it basically prints the, the VST and everything, all the information to audio so that you're using an audio file instead of generating the sound with your synth and all that. It's a lot more nice for your, for your processor. That's a really processor heavy plugin. So before I, before I take off, what, any questions, anything, everybody's kind of lurking today and that's fine, but I'll, I'll be here for the next like five, five, 10 minutes or so. If there's questions. Anything, anything, anything? Cool. Yeah, so um, I will keep doing it. Like I said, as long as there's interest and in, in all that stuff, I'll keep doing it. But uh, otherwise, I'm on Twitch at 9.30 Central European time, 3.30 Eastern time every night of the week monday through friday um monday and friday we do dj sets tuesday wednesday thursday there's more ins and outs working in the studio doing interviews with people in the industry or outside of the industry whatever's interesting and um yeah then also do like music reviews and stuff on there so so tune in there and we will be on twitch here in about an hour and a half, give or take, child permitting. So hope you're doing well. Hope this works. Let me just make sure that everybody has this still in the chat so that it's the, um, I'll just re copy and repaste. Should all be there. And I will save, save life set. And now you're going to be all good. Be set up. You've got the file. And yeah, join the Discord if you have any, if you have any other questions or want to get involved and get to know other producers or whatever. It's free. Um, lots of really good people that are always chatting about gear, studio, DJ stuff, and um, also complete nonsense. So fun times. We will see you, some of you on Twitch and uh, the rest of you see you in the next couple of weeks.